An Atlanta flight was forced to land after a passenger had diarrhea all throughout the plane. I said we're not doing the diarrhea bit. He sent me the script. I did not approve it for the record. And the seats were covered in shit. Well, we're not going to do the intro no, about that? I don't that? care what Potty Polishuk wants to be doing on this podcast, but yeah, you send me filth like this and you want me to read lines like it was flight number two going to Browntown. It wasn't even flight number two. Talk about a shitty plane ride. Luckily, the engine didn't also crap out. That's what you get for flying Smelta Airlines in jet poo. Okay, well, was it Delta or JetBlue? It doesn't even make sense. What? They both worked for the bit. Sorry it wasn't flushed out. This is what I'm talking about. See, this is the kind of stuff I can come up with. This is my domain. You know, Bill Gates just bought a bunch of Bud Light stock. We could be doing a gay mosquito thing, but it's always back to diarrhea with this one. You know what? Fine. I'll just do it myself. The flight was heading to Barcelona, but it looked like Burning Man in there because it was so muddy. The plane wasn't moving, but the bowels sure were. Luckily, nobody was arrested, but if they were, it would be called Corn Air. Scott also plans on doing a captain's announcement. No. Announcement, by the way. No, yes, you do. No. So you but I guess down, if I did, I wonder what that would look like. This is your captain speaking, Captain Deuce Dropalo. It appears we have a brown bomber on board. The terrorist goes by the name of Osama bin Dumpin. It appears he's deployed both gas and liquid attacks. So whatever you do, do not go in there. That was a banger. The boys. It's the boys cast. The lads. It's the boys cast. The dudes. Prepare yourself for boys cast. Boys, 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 We are live in the place to be. You are with the one and only boys cast, a podcast for the fellas. The dogs, the homies. We want to give a shout out to all the fellas at Burning Man right now, the CEOs, every CEO of every oil and gas company with the goggles on his head, trudging around. In the slop. In the mud. Like a bunch of stinky pigs. All the burners out there. All the burners. But before we get into this episode, Danny had a special hot piece of I actually had a oh. piece of hot info too oh Yours we got a hotter. double hot goss yeah, I got actually a pretty good piece of hot goss interesting interesting so uh, as everybody knows the, our beloved big titty teacher from Canada uh-huh. formerly I'm listening formerly <laughs> big ass fake canned teacher um, who for so there was a much much uh, discussion about whether or not this was a troll. At first, people were like by you mainly. No, dude, honestly, <laughs> no. I, on the no, internet, but I say you must be the guy who discussed it most out of anyone on the internet. Maybe, but I like I was reading a lot about it this weekend just to see, and a lot of people have shifted over like from this person's sick, like in the head, to this is just a troll. They're and, messing and this with guy's us. the best guy of all time. Yeah, like that's like the Twitter discourse has moved to this guy's the fucking most base guy of all time if you look at like all the comments on everything so anyways the teacher got uh, transferred to a new school board in hamilton ontario and it was big news because uh the teacher is now a man right or like back to being a man went back got rid of the fake fake not wearing the fake jugs all this stuff anyways so and then everybody's like troll of the century what a troll this guy rubbed it in their faces he he, he wore all these big fake tits and they couldn't do back anything, to man and he's just working or whatever and f- part of me was like maybe that is the only thing that never added up to me was he got caught wearing the big ass fake tits at like a children's recital six months before everything by so this guy's been out there with so you're the like titties. that that was the one thing that didn't make sense with the troll thing because he got kicked out of a kid's recital because people were like you don't have a kid here why are you here in these big ass fake tits sure in burlington and anyways so i have it on very good authority somebody like <laughs> danny the, is an inside man an inside man board of education versus brown <laughs> yeah 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 that this is not a troll that the currently the teacher is basically going by they them and this per- is a uh, i uh, the, the the source can't be released, but it's I can't a very, the source, very but reputable. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like very reputable source. Close like, to the source. Th- this is this is like if this was gambling, this would be my lock of the week right here. Okay, <laughs> this is my lock of the week, and then I pull out a giant lock. Uh, but basically, the the teachers, this isn't a troll. They are now, or he's like going by they them pronouns. So they said, what a, did your guy? And the reason b- before okay. is because just the whole like shit storm, the media shit storm made his life just like so fucking like nuts. He didn't even want to be famous because it really seemed he, like he yeah, did. It, it wasn't, and he just like didn't want any of the smoke. So well, you can't have the big ass fake cans, and but you don't want from no the smoke. sound, from what I understand, this guy just wants to live a normal life in the country. You know, this guy, if he had his druthers. 
would <laughs> be wearing the big ass fake cans as a shop teacher in Burlington. So or you're Oakville. in your mind, he wanted to wear the cans. Yeah, it's like he, he wishes the news didn't even notice. He thought just went on. Just, he, just like he just wants to he, be me. You know, I just want to be me. I'm starting to be a little skeptical of this because it's I'm like I'm telling you, I have the inside scoop. It's a whole thing, dude. So the, the guy needs a fucking police escort to school every day, like by car. So okay, did this He's like the president? <laughs> the president of the big can society yeah did they say that this guy is a nutcase or normal i mean use i well, uh, well, i mean do, normal? Your ins- no your, does your inside man has just sort of had enough of the whole thing he's like this guy is just a hassle it's just it's- that's yeah i don't know they can, i mean one is like look you can do all this stuff wearing these big ass tits in School cause all these problems. They won't fire you over this. They in, can't in, fire nobody a, over nothing, in, man. Not in the school board because the school boards are all about like all the stuff, all the stuff, right? So they're definitely not firing you in a school board. And so again, this is the story is that, and so we, the the one I guess concession is that it's they them pronouns, but present, right. looking like a dude, just okay, looking like his normal. You ready self. for my inside scoop? Yeah. So we've been talking about Frank D'Angelo. Yeah. Back in the day, did you I, watch the thing? No, I didn't watch uh, your thing yet. I saw I saw like five minutes of it, but I just don't want to watch that many things, man. I still got to get through my gangsters talk. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> okay. So I have an inside man myself nice. who played hockey with Frank D'Angelo. And? and? Just the last little bit, we always have to, just for people that are just tuning in or whatever, he's a guy in Canada. Uh, like made all these crappy movies and uh, had bought himself a fake crappy TV, TV show, show and crappy musician. Okay, crappy everything. But we've been we've, <laughs> you just like and potentially murders. We've been on this guy's ass, right? But he made a movie called The Goalie. So I, he's a goalie in real life, and I have an inside man who played hockey with him. Yeah, and then so Frank D'Angelo would play in these leagues, and he was a goalie, and he sucked at goalie. Of course, and then Is he, he good at anything. He would pay other players to play on his men's league hockey team oh yeah yeah. yeah. so i know an inside man that was that was one of the paid paid hands yeah that played hockey on his team so he would have like these guys that all played Ringers. like junior yeah. and you know a couple guys that played on like the national team like, i remember he NHL. had some uh, yeah 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 but so he'd get these guys but he was so bad at goalie and the guy said Every game was like 11-10 mm. because his team would get so many goals, but then he sucked at goalie. So Frank D'Angelo would pay, you'd pay for his team. So he's basically papering over his bad goaltending by just like, we win, <laughs> but the scores are just crazy. Motherfucker's losing two grand a game. <laughs> and if you look at the league scores, it's like 2-3, two, 4-2, two, you know, 4-1. Sure. 12-10. <laughs> Every one of their games is a 12-niner. I have a feeling that when... when uh, <laughs> they had 14 shots and 12 goals. Yeah, I have a feeling when Barry Sherman passed away, that grift ended too. <laughs> he's like the hockey... The ho- well, if he's dropping two Gs a game, he doesn't have that kind of money. I can't be just losing two Gs on a men's Hell league no. hockey game. What kind of freak is paying for ringers on their men's league team? Like, I mean, the, the same kind of, of freak that does all the other stuff he does. you have to be. All the other shit he does that like totally checks out. It's a real, real crazy, you know, mentality. That's, that's mental. So that <laughs> shout out Frank the Goat. Okay, so this is probably this is a probably for me and Danny probably one of our best stories. But this is uh, an inside comedy thing. But yeah, so I'll just tell the quick thing. I don't. We don't even need to really go to the article, but I have it here. Yep. Well, this is French people. So tabernacle, tabernacle. There's a there's a comedy scene, and it obviously some of you might have been aware. This may happen in your industries, and maybe happening in every industry. This you might have seen in the last little bit a little bit of a push for women in sure. X industry. Yes, whatever that may yes, be. Yes, a bit of a leveling of the playing field, <laughs> yeah, yeah. if you will. Yeah, it is funny just to even think like, you know how right now men are doing worse in college and, you know, uh, which just proves that, and men are still making more money afterwards, proves that even that's how smart they are. They don't even need <laughs> yeah, of course. Even with a less college, they're still doing better. We, but, we shall persevere. But more importantly, it was just like, there's still people out there being like, we need to do things to help women in college. You're like, it's already, it's more than leveled. They're like, we will never stop. Yeah, yeah, of course. We'll never stop. It's a hundred. Well, then what? I just don't 100. have my job Yes, as a level playing fielder? And then they crush you. And then and then comes the milking machines, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last yeah, step course. in all of this is they start milking us. So what happened was... And anybody who's been in comedy knows that it's like sometimes hard to get a ton of girls on shows. One of the big reasons is there's a hundred times less women that start to the do stand-up comedy. The demand is so high for women in comedy right now versus the supply. Like it's a very simple like 
you know, explanation, calculation, whatever. But it's like it, that they just look like they get asked all the time. They're like, I can't make all these shows. Exactly. Right. Like, what would you say, honestly, the percentage, the ratio of male to female comics is? Uh, probably like eight to one, seven to one, maybe something like that. A yeah, maybe bit, like I would say, yeah, like twenty. No, yeah, like fifteen percent. I mean, depends on where you go. Again, it's like if you go to an open mic, mm -hmm. it is forty people and two of them are women. Yeah. If you get into the higher level, and they don't last skipped. there very, and that's the thing, they don't last there very long. <laughs> no. Like they show up to open they mics, they get they, they get go, plucked out of those things. No, or yeah, they get plucked out. Yeah, or they just move up. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't. See, so yeah, long you can there. you can kind of skip that whole scene a little bit as a yeah. woman, right? But the moral of the story is, then they start. There's been a lot of these organizations that they start these pages, the shame and get shame, name and shame, right? Sure. And then Squeaky Wheel get, does get the grease and and uh, right. diversity. So in stuff. in Quebec, they basically in all of the publications cover this. But basically, there was an organ. There was a the shows. They were saying there are not enough women on the show, so they started a Facebook page and an Instagram page that essentially anytime there's a lineup that doesn't have girls on, they name and shame. Yeah. And this stuff obviously gets popular. Yeah. It gets picked up by the blogs. So and luckily, they find time to do the naming and shaming in between doing all the spots <laughs> they're doing on all the other shows. <laughs> They're like so busy. They're like, I don't even have time to do the naming and shaming this week, but I just will. <laughs> well, that's a funny part. Or someone who's like done two spots and then they go, I deserve to be on shows. And you're like, no, you don't. Well, you may bring up sort of a funny point because it's like, these aren't like, you know, big institutional things. This is like a dude that started a show at a bar. And to so, save his bar. But, or, but or you go, whatever. yeah, but I'm, I'm even saying comics. Like most shows are started by comedians. So you kind of look at it and you go, Okay, well, all these shows are run by men, and it was like, <laughs> why don't you start shows? Yeah, why? One, why, like, why is that though? Like, if you actually break down, you go, all these shows are run by men, and be like, why though? Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> like, why don't do you have do you have a show? And you go, no. Like, <laughs> why don't you? Not only that, like you had a show. Yeah, I had a of show. course. That's like the number one thing when you start comedy. Like, you start a show. Yeah. You know. find, you literally walk around and you go, a dry cleaner. They can have a <laughs> fucking comedy show in there. Boxing ring. You know, oh, why, do I, why doesn't this food truck have a comedy <laughs> show? Out front, there's always a lineup. <laughs> there's a you built in just, audience. Every, <laughs> that's a big, you hear that a lot, the built in audience. JJ was the king of that. He yeah, would, I know them. J JJ would literally walk by, like, you know, a, a welfare line, and he's like, prime real estate. Yeah, get a mic right. in front of these people. Yeah, this could be a comedy <laughs> show. Also, <laughs> it's, as soon as you see, it's kind of like how uh, how these people look by, and they ev if they ever see an uneven amount of men and women, they, they their flashes go up. Mm. That's how, like, open micer dudes are. Is you walk by, if you see a, gr a gathering of more than two people. Sure, that you, might be willing to listen. You just started doing one of these. You're yeah. like doing the director yeah, 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 thing. Yeah, yeah. You go, let me. You go, his friends are go. What is he thinking? He goes, shh. He's Give working. me a mic. Give me a mic. <laughs> Give me a PA system. He's working right Battery now. Battery powered. You go. You're just the JJ's the rain man for places <laughs> that you can put a comedy show that don't want one. Yeah. Also with the shows, like just generally, especially these types of shows, people just want to hang out with their friends. You're hanging out at a bar, so every, these guys are just like, yeah, I want to hang out with my friends, and they could not have been more right. In this <laughs> selection, they're like, yeah, we didn't pick the two chicks who made a Facebook group about oh, us yeah. not booking them to shame us. That's you're like, you want yeah, you're like, you're the last people we want to hang out with. <laughs> that is definitely, you're literally inviting like the, the head snitch to the. Yeah, like just the know, drug <laughs> bender. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, you're just like, fuck that. They're like, yeah, we, we were right. So the Montreal comedian. So we didn't even get to the part, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, so the Montreal comedians. Creating an Instagram called Pas de fil sur le spacing. No girls on the lineup. And this thing's been popping off. So how the dudes started to defend against it. Yes. And I just like to note in comedy before it started to cut you off, female comedians are overrepresented in comedy. Across the board. Percentage There's wise, of course. No question. Not not as a population, like of the actual overall. No, it's population. not that would be fifty fifty. That would be fifty fifty, but as the amount of comedians, they're way overrepresented. Of course. Like and it's crazy because they complain Well, they're sought after. They're sought after, but not even that, but like they complain about this. And then I specifically, because of this article, went and looked at like the JFL lineup. And you're like fifty fifty, probably. It's literally fifty five forty five men. When it should be 80 20 to be and fair that's, it's more than 80 20 but yeah or whatever like or that. whatever yeah. yeah yeah right but it's like it is legitimately just for last which is a quebec-based 
biggest comedy festival in the world. It's like fifty five forty five. Exactly. So just in cur- for the like, so just do the math. You have a forty. You have a three times higher percentage chance of getting super overrepresented. Basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So these guys decided. Uh, instead of being shamed by these uh, blogs, they started putting, which by the way, they become news. Yeah. Like these blogs, they say, the girl puts on an Instagram page. Next thing you know, you're like the face of misogyny because <laughs> you, you just put your buddies on a comedy show. Because you did show. like a funny gag. <laughs> no, no, just... I'm saying even before this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what they did was they started making AI women and putting them on the comedy show. Yeah, AI so every, every week, yeah. <laughs> every lineup they made. They're just like, oh, we have a comedy show with our three buddies. If we throw on a fake girl on the lineup, we won't be named and shamed, <laughs> right? Yeah. So they started putting these the fake girls on the one. They had one fake girl, and it's pretty funny. It sounds like every every show at the beginning of the show, they go, oh, she canceled. Yeah, she it. canceled. Yeah, yeah, she, got, <laughs> and then, ah, she didn't make it. And then that's become news, by the way. Sure. That's Canadian news right here. It denounces the boys' club and comedy, calls out all male lineups at the comedy clubs and events across the province as more than 150 posts. In just a few months of operation. <laughs> so they're busy. 150 <laughs> posts? That's in a few months. So 50 posts a month. Well, like, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll just say advice. Probably this Damn, is Damn, women advice. definitely approach doing comedy <laughs> way different than guys. <laughs> If you're a guy new to comedy, you go, oh, you want to book me, huh? Well, then I'm going to make a Facebook page and name and shame you. You're like, you are done forever. Exactly. I don't care if you're fucking George Carlin. You're done. If you're That's a, it. If you're a, yeah, if you're like a new comic and you start naming and shaming dudes, like move to a different city you're and not, change your name, and I guess. You, moving might not even help. <laughs> that might follow you around. <laughs> That's, I'm going get celebrated. Oh, I've been working really hard at comedy. I have 150 posts. No stand up <laughs> clips. <laughs> Dude, I'm just in the lab, you know, just cranking out, just just working hard. You go, oh, yeah, clips. Busted. Comedy writing? <laughs> pretty comedy writing? pretty good way to not get booked on a show. I would say, whatever job you have, if day one you name and shame 150 co workers. <laughs> sure. Yeah, exactly. You're like, anything. <laughs> this applies to anywhere. Then we had, I, my, my favorite thing was. <laughs> because this is all, even in the heat of this stuff we all just had so many scabs on the inside of the all girls because i'm telling you anytime you put it there was all these all girl like groups yeah and again it's not this is, this is the most applicable thing in any industry of course but you get a bunch of clucking hens in the group and they'd have like a lot of girls they would start these groups in toronto and we always had so many yeah, scabs the on the, was, inside. the one in toronto remember was called the hustle <laughs> which was they did the opposite of that <laughs> but like if something went on you didn't I'll, I'll tell you one thing the, you do not want to be in that group no no it, it actually always is devolved. effective it always just like devolved into like just uh, the classic no but I'm saying you don't want to be shamed in that group like it oh, was an effective not. shaming yeah. Danny Polishuk was oh, frequently was shamed yeah, yeah of course but if there was someone they would always have like these uh, big shaming and naming sessions like you know some guy did something wrong and this guy not even comedy related sometimes it would just be like bad dates and this guy's yeah. the ab- you know they are the abuser <laughs> of the week right you do not want to be on their abuser of the week they are they are powerful when collectivized sure. it's a strong union is oh, these yeah. groups right but the problem was that the infighting would always take them down it's kind of like when you ever see like a super communisty politician and then they always find out they they always have like 10 people and they're not paying them enough and then they unionize against the person and then their whole thing falls apart yeah like he buys like a studio apartment and they go wait you own a studio apartment they're like we <laughs> rent ours and he goes well i've just been working hard and they go Pff. how is our politician run not like a how are we not yeah. even on every even Stevens on everything Mm -hmm. from the CEO to the you know the delivery guy why are we not even Stevens on everything so it always kind of falls apart right but they're more on top of it falls apart because of that. It always falls apart because uh, there's some incentive for like a million girls to just be like, yeah, I don't fuck with that. Of uh, course. And well, then some go, girls- but you are like, there already is a huge incentive to try to put them on your shows because there is, it is true that if you have a show that there actually is audience there, which most of these aren't mm-hmm. like an audience would actually rather see like a show that has like some different things. Yeah. Assuming like, you that see, they're like, funny. Like if you see like five guys with like white guys with beards come and do like, like drinking jokes in a row you're just like, absolutely is every comedian the same thing like well, it just makes a worse show. for sure although i will never concede because i know some people will legitimately say that they're like it's better to have like a diverse show where some of the diverse comics bomb than have no that's not true non- but some people will say that like legitimately they're like i'd rather see a diverse show even if it's worse well that's not true yeah, i don't yeah, think obviously. i think that's a stupid one yeah but yeah there's always there's always an incentive for some girl to just be like you know 
Uh, just so you know, they're fucking talking of shit. Those girls are crazy, and you're like, oh. theory. and then you're like, oh, this girl's cool. Yeah, and all of a sudden, oh, you're, sure. you're like, all you're of a sudden, you see them. that girl on every show. <laughs> I know. It's. I mean, it's like every one of those like reality shows, like those games or whatever, where like those girls, they all just they stab each other in the back on Big Brother, and they stab exactly. each other in the back on comedy. It's. It always falls apart. Right. The Instagram page has been posting several screenshots a week of its lineups, and they said, it's crazy how much effort goes into not booking female comedians. Hats off to you. Really slow clap. I like the way that they post. Well, the other thing is, too, but it's funny. They're like, these guys made an AI-generated person instead of putting a girl on the show. It's like, you created an entire industry <laughs> naming and shaming instead of starting a show. Yeah, exactly. You're like, you could have spent all this effort starting your own weekly show, been on every one of them. Been on every you one of them. You could have honestly gone everyone... at the bar next door. <laughs> like, you could have gone next door to this club, been like, we're so much better that we're going to put it next door and we're going to take all of your audience, all of your customers. It's going to be all girls. <laughs> could have yeah. done that. And then, yeah, and you probably would have done better. And then on top of that, you just everyone you put on your show would have probably put you on their show. Yep. The guy he's like i can't imagine you if you like actually just, well now that you've made enemies with them but if you went up to them and you're just like hey if anytime you want to come do my show roll by and the guy was like cool yeah you can are you free to do mine tuesday i doubt the guy would be like oh we don't do girls sure of course <laughs> you know what i mean these are people who are probably pretty new to like the comedy game though like obviously they're not seasoned people and this is probably like they think that these power dynamics are like how comedy works it's not like oh go be funny They're and like, it does oh. to get your articles yeah it does that for shit, sure but, not to but i mean i imagine comedy. i imagine they maybe got a little bump where people were like a little afraid of them but like this i think this comedy club this they do have a bit like, of an adl push but eventually it crumbles <laughs> it's like somebody in quebec somewhere it's like in gatineau or some shit like, yeah, exactly yeah you're like oh, none like, of this means anything yeah the gatineau comedy <clears throat> scene like nobody cares no You've had a little bit of Jew on Jew violence with the ADL, making yeah. your videos against yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, I did. I'm coming out. I'm coming out against the ADL. <laughs> it's funny. You were telling me that you were like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Danny spent a bunch of time looking through their website. But it would be a funny thing to walk sketch. in on you just like Googling how <laughs> sick the ADL is. The ADL. I'm looking at the ADL's audited financial reports. <laughs> They had a pretty, you know what the truth is? They had a pretty good hustle going because a lot of these people at the ADL probably make a ton of money. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? They're they're essentially they have like, like an uh, investing firm. They've they have like two hundred huge donations, two hundred eighty million in the bank or something. Right? Yeah, exactly. But it's like, and they're probably getting so much money. Oh, tons. I was saying to you that they just, I was looking through their. Uh, feels like they, if they just like tone it down a little bit, they probably nah. you know couldn't. Have, but the, the, the problem with, is they they were at one point nonpartisan, like a, like the ACLU, same thing, right? They were nonpartisan, and then they just slowly shifted. Do you think, the and then their membership, is, the people who work there, more importantly, became super far left? Okay, so is that what happened, it. or is it that like one of their biggest donors who gave them like forty percent of their money was like, this is the agenda, bad Well, boys. it looks like that what, could have happened too. That's right? possible, but like the their main guy, like that Greenblatt dude, like he worked under Obama at the White House. And uh, who's that guy smokes crack? And um, he, uh, <laughs> the Tucker Carlson, <laughs> yeah, so crazy. It hasn't come out yet, so we don't know. But that's, Dude, Tucker Carlson's new show is so funny. Does. But most of their money, I believe, comes from corporate, like Coca Cola, like stuff like that. Who are? Oh. I think they all do generally lean like left, at least like in. Uh, yeah, but those are almost like that's like an extortion racket a yeah, little bit. Of course, like the ones that it's comes like the ESG stuff. Yeah, the one that comes from like the big the big companies is that's like the guy giving one of these girls a spot, being like, oh, a absolutely, please. a million, yeah, a million <laughs> bucks to the ADL for like their whatever. Uh, it's a protection stuff. racket. It's a protection racket, one hundred percent. Dude, it's no different than the mob coming and being like, be ashamed if something happened to you. <laughs> but I was, <laughs> yeah, literally, be ashamed if someone had to write an article about how you're not saying. <laughs> but I was saying, I was looking through the ADL's <laughs> financials and. And up yeah, until last year, they owned a residential. They owned fourteen percent of a residential <laughs> apartment building in Woodland Hills, California. Can you imagine me the ADL being your landlord? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Like I hope someone goes look. Not the best look for us to just be <laughs> people's landlords. I don't know if we're really like taking the temperature of the room right now, but we shouldn't just be people's landlords. There's other investments out there. <laughs> That don't require being a fucking landlord. <laughs> the head guy actually goes and does it himself and collects the checks <laughs> just to make sure none of it gets goes missing. Oh, Mr. Greenblatt, I <laughs> I just need until the third of the month. He goes, ah, can't get. I wish I could help you. I wish I could help you, but uh, anti-Semitism's through the roof, and uh, we need that money. Uh, you got, but I mean, it's fine if you don't want to pay me. If you want to walk on the lease, I mean, <laughs> heaven forbid someone writes an article about you. <laughs> 
Because you know what they. I'll uh, just put you on the list. Wait, 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 wait what list is that? <laughs> uh, just a little. We've just got a list here. Just making a list. You hateful symbols list. <laughs> you see the landlord mm-hmm. pulls out a piece of paper. If you don't have the money, you don't have the money. <laughs> uh, what was the spelling again? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll be back. No, I'll, I'll, have I'll, I'll have it for you by the end of the day. Right, I'll have it by you. Uh, <laughs> this is the last sound you want. Yeah, <laughs> just the pen click. <laughs> you do not want that pen click from the ADL. You know what I mean? No, business. You do not want green blood. But it is. Up. So uh, Elon Musk is suing them for defamation. Yeah, suing them for like $20 million. But like the defamation is kind of like hard to prove. But in their case, it kind of is real because they actually went and like solicited advertisers and they're like, anti Semitism's on at all time worse. And if he can prove it's not and that costs the money, it's like a pretty actual yeah, case textbook and for defamation. Sure. I mean, case. there's just so like obviously at some, the very least it costs some a lot of the of money, stuff but. they're like, okay, here's a guy who's like an avowed Nazi and there's this guy. But then like the problem is it's like it's all the gray area, like and like the margins, like sure, but then you're this stuff where like like I, you know, the, the people have talked about it and I put it in the sketch, but like they have this list of all the numbers. Like there's so many fucking numbers. The craziest one, I didn't even know this. The number eighteen is um 18 is like uh, considered like a gl- in their glossary of like problematic numbers or whatever. And what is it? It's um, Adolf one Adolf H Hitler. That's a stretch. A H right. But 18 is like the lucky number for Jews. That's- like it's literally like the, if you ask any Jew, 18 is the lucky number for Jews. So, and it's like the 18th letter of the alpha, the Hebrew alphabet or whatever, okay. which just means like uh, life or whatever. But like, anyways, you're like, how could these two things be? The- I thought the lucky number for Jew would just be prime. <laughs> <laughs> prime plus four. <laughs> it just changes. <laughs> prime plus four. <laughs> but like, it's so crazy. Like I saw that and I go, okay, you guys are fucking nuts. That So you're supposed to be like a bunch of Jewish people and someone goes, yeah, put 18 as our list of, as our number. That's like a white, and it's literally says like white supremacist number. Yeah. And they just shake everyone down. They put you on these lists and you can get bank accounts and they're so like a topped in. So they yeah. have been managed to really, like, and they get like, there's like, a, I feel like they got a little like too pushy with the Twitter stuff. It's like they had a racket going. They could have probably kept up for a long time. I mean, time. that's, oh, that's, it's the story of Icarus. Everybody just flies too close to the sun. You know, they, it was, the you Icarus. get, you get that power and you go like, what else can we do with this? And totally. And they keep going. And then eventually they just go too far. <laughs> Time the story is all the time. Well, our boy in Quebec said the page often mentioned us, painted us as misogynists, as if we weren't making any effort. Um, who said? So this guy's he even said he was like, you know, we try to get women on the show. It's like it's, we're in fucking the middle of nowhere. In also, Quebec. There's every fucking person in comedy total. is like, yes, of course, this is exactly what you're going through. And if you don't know comedy, you're like, you guys are sexist and misogynist and all that stuff. But uh, you have a titty. I do not see how I could put someone. But. <laughs> uh, you give me cigarette, I give you spot. If you do not have, I'm looking yeah. for a cigarette from Native Reserve. And uh, <laughs> she goes, a girl in the comedy. Now I have seen everything. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that. Yeah, those two girls are going to have their own show at JFL next year. The be- this girl better be com- generated by a computer <laughs> because that is only way it's a program by a man. Yeah. See, these chicks fucked up, too, because they have to acknowledge that that is a pretty funny gag. Hilarious That's an objectively gag, yeah. funny gag. And they can't be like, what's funny about that? <laughs> what's funny about that that yeah. was my spot you go it wasn't a spot it was they just spot. T- trying to get shamed yeah we're just doing a joke about you we're making fun of you now and they go what five bucks he gave this girl a spot she don't show of course <laughs> that's the other thing that's you forget the thing is like <laughs> she got a tummy ache that day <laughs> Oh, sorry, I can't make it. I got nine other spots. I got a blogging emergency. I found <laughs> I can't make it to this spot. There was another show in fucking Jean Pierre. <laughs> Trois Rivières. Yeah, yeah. You go, oh, hey, why can't you make it to your spot? Hey, you missed your spot. You go, miss my spot. There's fucking a show in Three Rivers right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a show in uh, Jean Pierre with uh, sure two broke? men on lineup. <laughs> they, they just, they're posting like <laughs> Louis C.K. has a special taping with only him on the bill. <laughs> you know, it's just one guy on the bill. It's like, yeah, it's the guy. He's doing yeah, his special his taping. No, 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 no. No, no, no. They must be women. <laughs> he, I see a Mike Ward podcast. He has uh, <laughs> him himself into one guest. Uh, guess what? 
Both have penis. <laughs> That's how the girl talks. Yeah. She got a very <laughs> butchy, butchy yeah, they them their, prob- their podcast is called Problematique. And on top of that, uh, even though I got on show because of being woman, joke is on you because I am they them. <laughs> You go, oh, I actually have a girl on. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. I am uh, they, them, so uh, that does not count, actually. Now that is, he goes, so often, but it does point to a larger issue, she said. If CBC will fucking write any slop. Absolutely. And that's, I mean, that's why f- their friend works at CBC. Fewer opportunities for comedy in 2023, and that's ridiculous. That's I not true. Honest. That is the opposite of the truth. There's never been more opportunities for comedy. Like, that is, like, the opposite of the truth. Yeah, well, more importantly, the whole game that they think exists, it doesn't guess. It's like, the whole deal right now is, like, putting your stuff on the internet and getting, like, the algorithm, the sure. algorithm. But more, you know what I mean? For but starters, there's never been more spots no, for all, women, But this is the ever. crabs in a bucket thing where you go, I promise you where there isn't any opportunity for any of y'all yeah. is getting no yeah. fucking Quebec. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Doing comedy in French in there's Gatineau, not even opportunity Quebec. in Ottawa, which is 15 minutes away. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so. Uh, and that's just ridiculous they said (laughs) ugh uh, here's a good one. It. That's, uh, yeah, it. that was, That's yeah. I, 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 three or four different people said to me like that because everyone was just like, <laughs> we got a banger alert, a banger <laughs> alert. <laughs> Why, do you have a, a penis? Vamir Ravitsaya, my podcast. Recently, I've been learning to speak Russian with Babbel, and you can too, because with Babbel, you can start speaking a new language in just Three weeks. One in five Americans got learn a new language on the bucket list. So if that's you, check it off the list this summer with Babbel. Maybe you got travel plans this summer and you can learn to speak like a local with Babbel. And why Babbel? Because it works. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations and all of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real life situations and delivered with conversation based teachings. I've been doing it and it's super quick for five minutes a day, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you have time for. You can just set it up for that. It has fun little games, interactive little modules or whatever they're called. And you can just easily learn a new language to the point where you can kind of get conversational with it. And it's a really good app. It's great. With over 10 million subscriptions sold Babbel is real language learning for real conversations and here's a special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now you get 55% off your Babbel subscription but only to our listeners at babbel.com slash boys cast get 55% off at Babbel b-a-b-b-e-l dot com slash boys cast babbel.com slash boys cast some rules and restrictions may apply And I got to tell you about DraftKings because DraftKings Rainmakers football is back for its second season and it's bigger and better than ever before. Head to DraftKings.com slash audio and sign up to play Rainmakers today with the code BOYSCAST. For your share of over $30 million in prizes this football season, this week new customers can claim their first pack of digital player cards for free to get started. Playing Rainmakers football is simple and each DraftKings digital card represents an athlete athlete and scores points based on their real world performance draft them into weekly contests for your shot at a share of 30 million dollars in prizes or sell them anytime on the draft kings marketplace rainmakers contests require no fee to join as long as you've got enough cards to complete a lineup Rip packs, build your collection, and earn big rewards. If you're wondering how to get started, new customers visit DraftKings.com slash audio today and use the promo code BOYSCAST to claim a free starter pack. Only at DraftKings.com slash audio with the code BOYSCAST. And if you got a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Age and eligibility restrictions apply. Rainmakers contest not available in certain states. One starter pack per customer. Starter pack player cards are in eligible for resale see terms at draftkings.com slash rainmakers this is uh going around to the sex therapist that is trying to save oh yeah, yeah sleeping with everyone yeah yeah so there's this girl 
Basically, girls find a way to turn every career into being a prostitute. <laughs> yeah, but they're like a lot of them are like these figurative <laughs> prostitutes. This is just literally she was a escort at the Bunny Ranch. <laughs> yeah. She is a real deal prostitute. You will have where it's a girl just like you know I'm a plumber and it's like there's a new business where she plums naked. Like, there's always <laughs> yeah, something, yeah, yeah, of right? Of course, of course. <laughs> but again, that's... Shoes, topless shoe salesman, you know. Yeah, and that's like great Zamboni <laughs> Nude Zamboni driver. Nude Zamboni Fucking driver. Nude bony <laughs> driver. Yeah, that's gray area shit. This is she is a legit prostitute. Yeah. So basically, what happens is they you go in as a couple, and then she like bones the dude. Uh -huh. And I, at first, I was off it, but then I feel like I'm sort of back on board with the girl because it is kind of one of those things where you just like your girl's like. You know, I think we should see a therapist. And you go, yeah, we'll both get a couple names. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, you only have one on your list. Goes, uh, the she's... only one I can really find that are uh, uh, for our needs. I for guess. our needs. I heard this one comes high. Like, I don't know, dude. If you're just walking in with your chick, she sits down. You're already undoing your belt. You're like, oh, what? How does, what? oh, oh sorry. Oh, right. I got to pay first. Uh, <laughs> my, my bad. I don't know. It, it, like. This is the ultimate. If your relationship's not going well, what, you're the dudes proposing this? We've been talking a lot about microaggressions, but now it's time to talk about macroaggressions. <laughs> this is the move you want to do when your relationship's not going bad and you want to be like, I just want to end it right here and I'm going to do it with this move right right. Oh, you think right it might here. be a good proposal? Like, you propose this, you're like, I was thinking the sex and Your chick's like, what? <laughs> She's like, you thought our fucking sexless, sexless marriage needed me getting you a prostitute? And then you go, oh, what? What? I, just, I guess we should just get divorced with them. Girl comes highly, highly recommended. I mean, that's the highest like level of skill required for like a move there. Well, it is. Girls love going to therapy, so it's sort of like something for her, something for you. I guess. <laughs> what does she get out of it, though? She's like, what is she watching? Is it like a female cuck situation? or? Uh, I think this... No, because I think that you can convince girls like, no, this is like regulated therapeutical. Like it's... You know what I mean? You can get them on board with dumbass shit. That's... I mean, You're that's... getting your dick sucked and she's fucking... Well, if the therapist says, the therapist says, and you're just like, <laughs> you got your thumbs up, yeah. You go, you go. I fucking love therapy. <laughs> Honestly, I was so wrong about this whole thing. Therapy's awesome. You know what's crazy is there's probably normal therapists that cost more per hour than this chick who's a prostitute. Yeah, this chick, how much was she? A couple hundred bucks an hour? Probably like, I don't, I don't know, but I'm sure. So what's that going to sure some... run us? 50 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's some therapists who are like legit cost more than that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I get physically involved with the majority of people I see. I think that's part of the appeal. I'm yeah. just... I bet you she tried a lot of other things before this. She was like, you know, prostitute. like I'm a new therapist. Yeah, I tried prostitute. Then I moved on to, to um, I, for a while, I was a uh, key grip that also has sex with the people. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then after that, I was a Maybe. cashier that also has sex with the people. Uh, then I moved waiter, on to therapist that also has sex with the people. Worked at a car dealership. I worked at a car dealership. I also had sex with the people. I also people. had sex with the people. <laughs> Yeah. I, I'll tell you what, ladies, if you want to add uh, sex into whatever you're selling, it's probably definitely going to up your sales. Uh-huh. Sex does sell. Especially when you're actually giving it. Yeah. I wonder if there's- if I sell shirts for $35, <laughs> but when they want to, when I fucking blow them after, I sell them for 45 I don't know Weird. what this- It's so bizarre, man. This new business model. Uh, I mean, I would love to see if there- Are women, you think, really getting tricked into doing this? It's funny too. She says, she goes, I get and physically involved with the majority of the people. I think that's part of the appeal. Just part of it though. Yeah. He thinks their therapy skills to the uh, other. Yeah. She part. also has no qualifications. That's <laughs> yes, the best yeah. part, dude. There's just no qualifications. She's not. That's what I was going to say. I'm like, yeah, she probably charges less than an actual therapist. She goes, yeah, she's not a therapist. <laughs> she's, she's not like a therapist. A, she's like a, she's just a prostitute. who's like a working <laughs> voice box. She, yeah. I guess you can speak. The veteran sex worker, <laughs> veteran, who spent 15 years in the industry. So she's a prostitute for 15 years. She yeah. just, you know, she wanted to get out of the game, you know? Of course. She couldn't go full clean, though. She started weaning herself off being a <laughs> prostitute. <laughs> she couldn't get out of the game scot free, you know? Do you think she I mean? ever it's like put smoking on, to vaping? Do you think she ever, it was like when she was at the brothel and then someone was like, what outfit do you want me to wear? And they're like, can you do like a therapist? And then she saw herself in the mirror and she goes, like she got like the light bulb. She what goes, the fuck? Hmm. <laughs> I have an idea here. Let's see, perfect. She goes, they wouldn't take me at the hospital when I tried to be a nurse, but this might just work. <laughs> you know what I was thinking? I've been saying this a bit on stage, but like, um, 
uh, getting pegged by your girlfriend is the vaping of being gay. Yeah. So it's, you know what I mean? You're just like, a cigarette? A I would toe, never. A toe in the water. Yeah, you still got a cylinder <laughs> in your mouth and a couple beers in you. You start fiending for the real thing. <laughs> the vaping of being Not gay. Not me, man. <laughs> I'll vape till I Exit die. only, dog. The veteran sex worker um, she claims that women have asked her to demo sex acts on their husbands while some wives grant their eager hubbies a hall pass. So she, <laughs> sometimes the eager hubbies get to go solo. So the one guy just can't get enough therapy all of a sudden. Yeah, he goes, I love therapy. Yeah. They said they want more guys to go to therapy. <laughs> well, you have it. They didn't say what kind. <laughs> I mean, look, if, if you can convince your chick that she, it's cool, I don't know. Like, I don't know if the, there's like these sexless marriages when the guy goes and smashes this prostitute and then comes back and like the fixes the marriage and then the chick can kind of look past it. I mean, if you this. like, if you want it, like, listen. It's like starting a car that's been sitting in a garage for like 30 years. This you know? girl brought up some pretty good points. She goes, there's people in relationships where the girl is married to the guy and she's not into sex anymore. So the guy... There's scenarios where the guy wants to hit it and the girl's not interested. And, yeah. the, and she makes a good point. Agreed. Where, where it's like, well, then what? The guy's just like, out, sh you're out of luck, pal. It's like, yeah, she's sort of solving that. I mean, again, the therapy has nothing to do with this. Sure. <laughs> again, like he's just like, hey, you won't let me have you won't have sex with me. Can I go see a prostitute? No. Like, what? No. Can I go see a <laughs> therapy? <laughs> you hit your girl's yeah. head. She goes, what the fuck? Did you just do <laughs> What'd you do? You go, uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess a therapist is fine. <laughs> I'm very affectionate and physically and emotionally towards the wife always. So she's pretty good. It's basically a prosty that's pretty good at convincing your wife that this is like the real, this is somehow medicinal. Yeah. Ah. So it sounds like she's worth every penny. I mean, penny. she don't look medicinal. I'll tell you, those photos do not look medicinal. <laughs> this girl's worth every penny, dude. Yeah. The mood is elevated and we have a really good time and the husband is very grateful for the experience. All, all She's going yeah, to... He's like, I can't believe my wife's okay <laughs> with this. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has a lot of clinical terminology to describe. The guy liked getting blown. <laughs> this fucking, you'd, you'd be surprised. My mind would be set. Some of these hussies, husbands out there, they come in, they're a little nervous, but once I'm, you know, got their, <laughs> <laughs> once I got their fucking rod in my mouth, they actually. Who would have thunk? <laughs> I, could, thunk? I would think most guys would be like, this is some kind of trap. I, I also, I'm a little skeptical of that. Oh, hey, honey, it. I want to go to this therapist. And she goes, sure, that sounds like a great idea. I know. And, go, and then it's just the two girls, and they point at your dick and go, <laughs> you call that a dick? Like, it's just <laughs> it goes, still better than what I had before. <laughs> yeah. They just name and shame you. <laughs> See, you've just been busted. You thought you could just waltz in here and get free sex. It's a one-way street with you. You go, Mr. what? You're just sitting there naked with just your shirt on, winning the pooing. <laughs> what? <laughs> Very affectionate to the wife. So she says she's pretty good at getting the wife on board. The self-proclaimed sex therapist denounced unfair women who refuse to fulfill their partner's sexual desires. Because she knows she don't have to convince the men. Yeah. She knows she's got to be like, hey, women, you're being unfair. Sure. Well, what happens, it sounds like they go in there and the guy's like, she has a lot of cl <laughs> clients where the guy's just like, yeah, one of my big problems is she doesn't want to smash. And then the girl goes, yeah, I'm just not interested in smash. And she's like, I could solve this for the platinum package. Sure. Yeah. I mean, in a clinical environment, <laughs> yeah, like, like it a, would be it's weird. It's a porn set. It's probably like has uh, like those set walls. Do you think she has a Murphy bed? <laughs> She presses the button, the bed comes down. She goes, I have multiple sets. Yeah, it's the only therapist where you need to shower before you go. <laughs> she goes, you just hop in the shower first? You go, hmm. I normally don't have to shower before my therapy. <laughs> yeah, she just shower first. <laughs> Uh, it's not an option to get married to a man and then turn around and say, "Oh, sorry, I'm not into sex anymore." I'm telling you, this girl's based. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I'm. I'm no, all the for based it. are the chicks who are letting their husbands do this shit. They're the based ones. Well, I think that they're less based. I think it's less based and more like they buy into it. You got it. <laughs> I mean, it's either one of the two. It's either the girl's just like down with the guy banging a prostitute, in which case she also wouldn't be down, mad with him banging a prostitute. Yeah. Or she believes the bullshit. Like, I don't think that there's a, you know what I mean? In between. And she just needs to just package differently. Yeah, I think this is all about like, you know, it's all about sales. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get, your, you get her foot in the door 
And because the guy's not saying like, hey, what do why don't we switch from therapy for a little bit so I can blow your husband? She goes, why don't we continue therapy? You've already sold them on <laughs> yeah. the therapy. It's like, why don't we just sell them on more therapy? Right. I wonder if the first like appointment it has sex in it or maybe that comes later and that's how they ease you in. Or is it just like sex right out the gate? I wonder if yeah, if you go in and she's just like, is this is the wife com- like coming with you? Sometimes the guy does solo sessions. It's a- that's, <laughs> that's fucking nuts. She goes, you're really into uh, therapy lately. Really big therapy guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll tell you what, ladies need to take it easy with their fucking online shenanigans right now. Like we said, there's like 5 million chicks on OnlyFans. Ukrainian sisters arrested for twerking on the graves of fallen soldiers. So, ladies, get it together. You know what I mean? What the fuck these chicks are thinking? Uh, Get it together. And they tried to say, oh, the guy would have liked it, this or that. Their dad. They went to go visit their dad. Their dad. At the cemetery who died in the current conflict. Yeah, it's like when Bieber was posting at Anne Frank's thing always, you know? Yeah. I don't know out of these chicks, and then they got arrested. I guess it's a serious crime because they went and they posted it on Instagram. Well, you know what I, you know what I've also been saying is that uh, <laughs> just a side note. So basically, um, like girls always take credit for a dude when he's like the best, right? It's always like you know every. Uh, behind every great man, there's an even greater woman. But you never hear behind every man that committed atrocities is an e- even more atrocious man. Yeah. Even more atro- behind every man that committed atrocities is an even more atrocious woman. Right. And uh, <clears throat> like like Hitler's girlfriend, you know Eva Braun, Eva, I believe. Yeah. Name, yep. She sort of gets off the hook. You know what I mean? I was Ooh. saying if if she existed right now. She would have like a blog about 10 reasons why her husband, well, how to spot dating a narcissist. <laughs> yeah, she'd, like, be, she'd be writing for Mamma Mia. Eva Braun would have a podcast with Anne Frank about how they're both victims. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they would like relate over. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like how his narcissism affect. And she would be saying like, you know, 10 ways that I wasn't able to spot narcissism in, in my abusive boyfriend. Number one, he wanted to kill all these Jews. Right, and they'd have like a $5 million Spotify deal. <laughs> yeah, how do you spot on, a narcissist? Like, Ob- Number one, on he kept Obama trying to take over the world. World. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they would exactly. Yeah. They have a spot. They have a Spotify deal on the Obama network. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hitler just rots in prison. <laughs> exactly. But I'm telling you, get it together, ladies. You know, if ever, if every 15, 15- I mean, just have some fucking common sense. Have like, some class. Like, go. You don't. As Don Cherry cem- said, it's a real not class act here, boys. No, just don't fucking twerk at a cemetery. I don't know who needs to be told that. <laughs> it's like, don't do it. At- just there's certain places that are just off limits. I mean, well, you think that it, it doesn't stop there. This is actually a guy and girl, but it's more of the girls. The there's a bunch of nuns, right? Uh, sexting nun faces possible excommunication by refusing Vatican orders. But so to stop sexting, yeah. So this girl's been I sending what the sex. rule is there. I guess I guess they're trying to say it's no, but she's like, well, God didn't write anything about sexting, and that's I think the sex are very religious. Like, I want to be, you know, turned into Jesus and pegged. You know what I mean? Turn <laughs> put me on the cross. Yeah, daddy. put your wood, <laughs> put your wooden peg into my arm, like I'm Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I think she's and she's want, handicapped too. She's disabled. I didn't see that. Yeah, part. she's in a wheelchair, so she's really not getting any. Whoa, it's a girl I mean, she's sexting. She's a nun from who's a, in a wheelchair? wheelchair who's sexting. She's saying stuff like, "I'm not perfect weight." Yeah. <laughs> I'm at perfect height. She goes, I'm a spinner. I'm a- <laughs> the wheelchair part of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah I can't wait for you to fucking wheel me. I love how that's what they have to deal with at the Vatican. They're like over fucking I know. in Rome and they just get like their email list. And exactly. They go, hmm, this nun in Dallas won't stop sexting. What should we do about it? They go, excommunicate her ass. I guess it's pr- pretty low on the sexual problems that this specific church has. Uh-huh. But the reason it's funny is because, so basically- the the main the bishop was the guy who was like sexting them and it's all sort of like they're all in trouble but the bishop is trying to get rid of these girls he's trying to get rid of the girls and then the the nuns all banded together and they go we're not going nowhere yeah and it's kind of like a high school scenario playing it's out a bit of a church. mutiny going on it's there. a mutiny but it, it's like it's so funny because it's just sexting it's the kind of shit that would happen on a you know like a fucking high school yeah camping trip but for or them shit. they are sex their sexual development is like a team trapped in high school yeah and then they're the, the bishop wants these guys gone you know what i mean like the bishop she gets a text <laughs> it's like oh oh well i never well, I've, I've never never got a text like this before i'd love to get inside those knickers like you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah some shit like that because i'm gonna have to do extra confession for this 
And and all the girls are getting together saying, we reiterate, they do not recognize the authority of the Bishop Olsen and their monastery, and they refuse to accept any interference with him as political commentary. And an office conferred on him, blah, blah, blah. So they're waiting for the Pope to basically, they're like, unless the Pope says something about this, we're just sexed in a way. They've essentially said, you're not my daddy to the guy. <laughs> when he said, you guys are out of here, we're sending you to a new church, and then these bitches all got together, and they're like, we don't fucking answer to you. Yeah, they only answer to the Lord. And then exactly. The Pope. You know, I, it's funny, because girls, like with all the equality stuff, right? This is the one thing that they can't really get their paws on because it's the things are from God, right? Yeah. Like one of the things is they could never be like a priest in the Catholic Church that does the confessionals, and the reason for that was even God knows that no girl could hand that handle that level of gossip. <laughs> Just God knows that they should be like, yeah, <laughs> they'd be literally like in the confessional booth and goes, "Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I cheated on my wife." You know? Do tell! Holy, holy shit, he cheated on his wife. <laughs> What? <laughs> you could no girl could handle me in confessional booth. I'll tell you what, if I was dating a girl that was a confessional booth, I'd know every confession in the town. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you ever not been told a secret and you're like, stop telling me your secrets? Dude, my <laughs> girl tells me secrets <laughs> every day. The most mundane, <laughs> stupid shit. And then she'll be like, you can't say this on the podcast. And I'm like, I don't, who gives a shit? <laughs> She says this all the time. She goes, you can't say this. Like my, my second cousin. Yeah. Like literally like, oh my God, my, my cousin said this or whatever. Like or this happened at my cousin's work. Like something happened at my cousin's <laughs> work. Do not say this on the podcast. I'm like, who the fuck cares? I wouldn't anyways. This is like, who gives a shit? <laughs> she says it like once a week. She'd be like, do not say this on the podcast. Like, You're good. <laughs> Dude, that would literally be, they'd be at the monastery and they'd just be like, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm cheating on my wife and I've done it a couple of times right now. And you see, it's like a stenographer. What's that? What's that noise? Nothing. Nothing. How do you ever think? Well, they they'd, so they'd basically be like that, and the girl would just be like. <laughs> but do you ever think that they've had a situation <laughs> where some guy came to the like confessionals and he was sort of saying like, you know, I'm just having these thoughts about having sex with little boys, and <laughs> the guy behind the thing has had to be like, well, you. You see this? <laughs> or What's what is that? Well, yeah, what, what is that? He's Her, calling them in. He's jacking them off. Oh. <laughs> Oh, he's here. He's currently. <laughs> he's currently because I am thinking about having sex with little boys. And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> "What? I don't get that fast." Yeah, oh, he, but he goes, "Yeah, he's like, I've just been having thoughts about little boys." He goes, "Ew." <laughs> <laughs> Describe it to me. Like he's yeah, yeah, but he's yeah, exactly like T what? Ew. What the heck? Continue. <laughs> Oh, what's his name? <laughs> uh, now this little boy, he's been he's been opening the idea. Or what's his address? Just <laughs> go to this church, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, if any girl was a confessional person, she would not be able to handle that job. That would yeah. wreck them. That There's a reason why they have. I'm sure they got God knew. I'm sure they had a shot once in like the 1500s. <laughs> it went poorly, <laughs> and ah! and they were like never again. <laughs> Never again. Broke up the entire town. They, yeah, they just like, okay, we'll, we'll humor you. They let him try the confessional booth once. Somewhere in Italy and like, and then they go, yeah, I'm not doing this. It was like, you know, Naga, the, we'll it's, it's like literally like it happened in like Milan. And then like they heard, they heard what happened in Sicily like a day later. And you're like, it's not even physically possible. How did it get so far? <laughs> How did it make it that far? Well, there's no technology. <laughs> Like, all right, no more. <laughs> you definitely would be here about <laughs> Yeah, so that's not happening. And then also one last little religious news is some girl wrote an article on Muslim girl who <laughs> said, the prophet Muhammad was actually an intersectional feminist. Yeah, well, nice knowing you. Yeah, yeah, it's just also funny, like just doing one one quick Google search and it's just like, how many wives did he have? Yeah, did he like, like bang an eight-year-old or something? I don't know about that, Danny. <laughs> That's none of my business. Anyways, man. that's been my time on the podcast. It's been a good run. Thanks for I don't know nothing about that, man. Every yeah. time I come over to Danny's house, he's drawing <laughs> Muhammad. You can't be trusted, this guy. 
I draw everybody, to be fair. He draws them all. Yeah, I draw them all. He pays a little extra attention yeah, I have, to Muhammad. I have, I have like... You, I, no, one time you were drawing Muhammad in the snow with your piss, and I didn't <laughs> personally think that was okay. That was not cool. I have on the back of my minivan, you know how they have like the kids? Like the family? <laughs> I have all the gods. Just as a decal on the back of my minivan. Ric Flair, God, <laughs> Buddha. All of them. Okay, you know what? I don't know if we've actually talked about this yet, but... So you've seen the new video that's come out of the the white supremacist guys, right? And every, the obviously, Nazis in yeah the the yeah blood bone tri- face blood tribe and so bone there's these face. guys. It is honestly I do think he's actually I I, I mean yeah. But let me just say it's what happened. One. Yeah, because at the beginning I was you know obviously every time there's there's all these like because you're pretty tapped into like internet stuff, right? Yes, if the, someone becomes like a you know. Uh, Richard Spencer or whatever, like mm-hmm. everyone writes about them immediately. You know For what I sure. mean? If someone becomes like a running sort of a white supremacist group, like you fucking hear about it. Yes. You know what I mean? Of course. Especially like the in the Patriot this, Front. Yeah, like you kind of, it don't really, no one's like this running this like Nazi group, like under the radar well, these they days. Do. Well, right? I, I mean, so in terms kinda, of under the radar, like so Patriot Front. For example, that's the one where everybody's like, they wear the khakis and everybody's like, they're all feds or whatever. And okay. I'm sure people are watching this right now being like, they're all feds. I don't think they're all feds. I'm sure there are some of them. But like, I'm in their telegram group. Like, I do just like, they have a very active telegram group. Why they're are just, you in their telegram group? I like to see what's going on. <laughs> I keep myself informed, right? But like, they do, like, there's definitely- info- What do they say in their telegram group? They're just like, you What know, other telegram groups are you in? Don't worry about it. Uh <laughs> <laughs> just want to I want to keep an eye on these gays yeah. <laughs> just like you know sometimes in person I just like to see what's going on on the other side of a glory hall I don't know just got the eye through the hole <laughs> M for M meetups yeah. I just want to see what these queers are doing yeah but I mean well no because I remember like seeing them and I was like I very much like when I saw something like Patriot Front I was just like okay are these feds and so I you know I go look into it and then you come across their telegram and then I just I don't like I go and maybe check it once a month or something I'm not like in there every day but they post stuff where you're like I don't think well, it's not logical to think this is totally just all feds and nobody's but then there are many instances <laughs> like you know the like uh, Governor Whitmer. Yeah, tell me what you Governor think. Governor Whitmer. So these guys stuff. are. I'll just say the quick thing. These guys did a big white supremacist rally. Everyone says it's like the government CIA. CIA has done stuff like this in the past. Yes, it is a little weird. They say they like Biden, which is like weird. There's all this they weird like, stuff they're like, going they're on. They like Biden more than Trump, is what they say. And then I'm kind of asking you, yeah. Now, so anyway, so the Patriot Front thing, I think, is like. I don't think it's feds. I think there might be some who infiltrated. I think feds infiltrate all these groups. This one was a weird one because there's like, if you ever see, there's like the, um, they're called like the, it's goyam.tv and they're called like the Goyam Defense League or whatever. And they're the ones who they'll always like go over overpasses and they'll like, they're the ones who are like, we agree with Kanye and they all, they're the ones who are always like in Florida are rallying. This is a different group from what I understand. But then there's like this. They popped dude, out of nowhere. Well, they, I don't think they popped out of nowhere they they pop up because obviously like they're standing at the side of an overpass or like on a corner in like okay. Orlando with like you know waving swasty because so it makes the news right but they probably do have like meetings and stuff but anyways what you're talking about is that guy um bone whatever bone face it's pretty crazy he like the but he did like he did go to Ukraine. Well, this is I think it's almost probably like like again, if you watch these uh any show about you know, a biker gang. Yeah. When they took him down, it was like they had 15 members. Of course. They were, so and when they, it's no all like question. loose, you know? Like, there's no question. I think a lot of like, times what happens is a guy goes to jail and they go, we're letting you out, but like, you're you're kind of going to tell us what's going on. Yeah, they're a double agent or like they're an informant. It's probably more of that. But I think when people go, they're feds, like when people on Twitter are like, oh, these are feds. They're, they're saying they're they saying, started stopping they're, the they're like, they're like, this is, they're all feds. Which I'm like, they're not all feds. No, I think they've like, Im- they like have people on the inside. But that's not what people, that, at least that's how I tr- like uh, interpret it when people go, oh, there's feds. Like, they're like, this is um, a, like a full federal thing and they're trying, they, they have some sort of like, this is like a means to an end for them where they're trying to, you know. What is the end? Sometimes it'll be, um, you know, like gun legislation because they'll say like, oh, there's like pro okay. gun, so we need to like restrict guns or whatever. Stuff like that. I, I don't know specifically. Which they have done a lot of stuff in the past. Yeah, and that's why I think people say, that they're feds because they have done stuff like this in the past and currently do and currently sure like the the Whitmer it is like, crazy Governor that people Whitmer, call like, you like, was, like a, they'll say it's like conspiracy theory to say that like FBI and CIA is like and you just like every second movie you watch is them like mucking it up with criminals course, you know what I mean of course I mean they, you know they infiltrate the mob and they infiltrate everything yeah, yeah. they infiltrate everything they're in the mix 
Absolutely. That's like part of their MO. But anyways, this this bone face dude or whatever. So Laura Loomer, who I'm not a huge fan of, like I just she's weird or whatever. I uh she's calling him like super but, racist or whatever. I thought well, she was like that's what everyone says about her. Well, yeah, but she, she yeah, people don't like her obviously. She's a big like Trump person. They called her Laura Jumer. I just Jumer. think she yeah, Laura Jumer, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> that's kind of funny. But um I just think she's a little fucking kooky. But uh, anyway, she's actually done some... I I don't know if this is what she's true, but like she posted um, a a body cam footage, a police body cam footage of that guy getting arrested either earlier this year or last year or sometime. And the cops are like running his name and shit. And like, there's no way this video is fake. Like, this is for sure real. And they're like running all this shit. And they're like, he had all these like, you have to like contact like the FBI office if you like... And so there's all these things, and then he was in Russia. Although apparently, or he Dude, was in, that was the he weirdest was in Ukraine. Part. But then Dude, some they, people were did saying, "Did you hear that part?" They go, "This is the part that allegedly happened." They go, "If this happened, it is pretty fucking nuts." He was like, he was in jail, and then the Biden administration was like, "Hey, we'll let you out or whatever, or like let you off if you go join the like Asov battalion. battalion." But like, fight against are the they Russia. are they like looking around the jail, be like, "Hey, are you a Nazi? Like, you can go over there and fight See, with." The Nazi. That just seemed like if that's happening, that's like crazy. See, I saw photos, and this got so this is like kind of a real time thing, so it's hard to parse. But she posted a photo today of him in what looked to be in like Ukraine, right, fighting. But then uh, someone that some people were saying the timelines didn't add up, and that like when he said he was in Ukraine, he wasn't. But it appears so. You think it's stolen Nazi valor? (laughs) I don't think so because like the the photo looked very convincing. Like obviously you can Photoshop stuff. But to me, it did look very convincing. There does seem to be some weird stuff going on with that where potentially like, yeah, I, I don't know exactly what. But yeah, like the CIA has informants. Like that's like a very the FBI, like that law enforcement. They have informants all the time. Obviously. yeah. Now he and might they're not that hard to get because people go to jail and you just let them out. And you're just like, yeah, but yeah, you reduce. We'll put you back in jail unless you fucking tell us the scoops. Well, and you reduce their sentences, right? You're like, you can do 25 years or you can help us out and do two. Like, yeah. And so it's like, it's a very common And then go thing. back to your gang. Or just start a new life or whatever, but... No, if you're an informant, they want you in there. Well, they want you in there until you break up the thing, the operation. Like, the whole point is, like, you take it down. Yeah, sometimes that's 15 years, and they just keep you there forever, fucking telling them scoops. Maybe. Yeah. Very, very potentially. So, this one I'm not totally sure on, but this is one where I go, like, yeah, maybe. But I guarantee you, like, a lot of those people are just, yeah, I don't know. There's not zero neo-Nazis. Yeah, I know. There's more than zero, so like there are some, and um, I mean they do stuff. They've been doing this forever, though. Like these marches. Like I guess had, the real question the famous, is what like, you're the, saying. Like, are they? Who's the one that? Co- it's kind of like when it goes to the terrorist thing. It's like who's the original idea? Like it's you know they find these people and the, is, is it them being like I'm gonna blow shit up and they encourage them or are they being like crazy if you blew some shit up? You know, well, that's I mean? like the Whitmer thing, the kidnapping the Michigan governor, where like they did all kind of get set up and they kind of never did want to do it. The FBI literally did set them up. That's the question is trick them into doing it and they were very like impressionable and i mean again so how much is did some of this stuff and it was stupid but is there one kind of main uh white supremacist that's just like really hamming it up for everyone he's like "Ah!" like what's wrong he's like just saw another race (laughs) he's just really just like hamming it up at the meetings yeah (laughs) i'm just so pissed off today it's like what happened wax <laughs> Brown one. He's got the earpiece in there, like you're going too hard. Like, too hard, too hard. Tone it down a bit. Tone take it, it down back. A bit. Take it back. Split the difference. All right. <laughs> Split the difference. Ah. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I went to the store. Guess what I saw? You'll never guess. A black guy. Oh, relax. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'll but- tell you what. No, no. You guys listen to me. Ruined my day. I tell you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. There are definitely some neo Nazis. I'm sure they're definitely infiltrated. They're not 100% fans. Hey, buddy. There might being be white's fans. pretty sick, huh? Yeah. But, but I, that I see so that a funny. lot where everybody is. There was this presumption. Just hamming that it up. It's mostly people on the right who. It's only people on the right who call them feds, really. And I think because they don't want, like that stink on them so then they'll try and distance well they used to i guess people on the left used to say feds feds everyone in the terrorist stuff yeah it's it's but they were they were like kind of low-key setting some people up for sure they've been doing this shit for fucking ever they love it dude yeah idle hands man yeah man (laughs) you got because you got to make your career probably you know what i mean you got you know they put you on some sting and it's like you need to create a big thing so you could take it down so you can get your next promotion you know yeah and so, like there's just a lot of these people who work at these agencies and maybe like there's a theoretically there's just like not that much to do 
I mean, I guess you could catch pedophiles. There's especially if you were like on, hey, I'm going to be on like blowing up buildings patrol yeah. and you go, the Arabs blowing up buildings, you go probably wasn't going to happen every day. I didn't realize you got a whole squad on them. Uh, you know, white supremacists like terror attacks yeah. probably not happening that much. You go and you got the, you got the fucking true, you got a squad probably on that. So they, they probably just walking around being like. Blacks, yeah. no, no good. Eh? Yeah, and you go, yeah. well, we should do something about it. And the guy goes, what? <laughs> what? He goes, nothing, nothing, nothing. nothing, nothing. And they just keep trying until they. They keep trying it. until. Yeah, I mean, there's this dude who I, I posted this thing on Twitter, but about the Oklahoma City bombings. This guy James Corbett did this whole thing about how that was kind of like, kind of a bit of an inside job. I'd never heard that before. I don't know if that's true. I'm not saying it's true, but there was some very compelling stuff that that the government. They're in had, the mix. The eh? government had a hand in, and I mean, they 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 do stuff like this. I don't know. It's. Uh, it's wild to think about, but... <sighs> and I got to take a second here to tell you about Factor. This is something that I've been using every day. They send you your meals for the week. The busy fall season's in swing. You might be looking for some wholesome, convenient meals for your jam-packed days. If you're busy, Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. Can fuel you up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You save time, eat well, and stay on track with a healthy lifestyle. I personally, much too busy to cook. I'm in, I'm out. So Bingo, bango. Bingo, bango. I've been a Factor, man. And I'll tell you one thing that I specifically like about this. Them, mm. is they do have a ton of variety yeah no i mean in my opinion the best part about them is just like how quick it is it's like literally two minutes in the microwave it is a big not. bang boom it's amazing yeah so and i actually like all them too so i'm super on board with it you can adjust your stride this autumn without missing a step so you can choose from 34 plus weekly flavor packed fresh never frozen meals ready to eat in two minutes and you can go and pick your individual ones if you want mm -hmm. if you, or if you like one better than the other ones you yeah. know you can mix and match you can also round out your meals and replenish the snack supply with an assortment of 45 plus add-ons including breakfast items like delicious apple cinnamon pancakes bacon and cheddar egg bites and potato bacon and egg breakfast skillets or for an easy wellness boost try refreshing beverage options like cold pressed juices shakes and smoothies so just head to factormeals.com slash boyscast50 use the code boyscast50 to get 50% off that is code boyscast50 at factormeals.com slash boyscast50 to get 50% off and I also got to tell the people about our partner at AG1 this is something I drink every single day. This is the first thing I do before my coffee. I shake her up. Yep. I also got the travel packs for when I'm traveling. Yeah, they're the best. So I never miss a day. It tastes good. It has all the vitamins. Everyone knows it's hard to get a vitamin routine going. You, you, you put them in the wrong place, then you skip them for four days. We were just having that conversation with JJ. He was yeah. saying that's so why he was he was on vitamins and they just stopped taking yeah. them. Yeah, oh, all the time. AG1 solves this whole problem for you. It's a foundational nutrition supplement that delivers comprehensive nutrients to support the whole body health. Since I've been drinking AG1, I've noticed an overall better feeling of health. You have more energy, mental clarity, improved digestion, focus, and the list goes on. It was designed with ease in mind so you can live healthier and better without having to complicate your routine. AG1 is delivered every month, so it is very easy to make a daily habit. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Just go to drinkag1.com slash boyscast. That is drinkag1.com slash boyscast to check it out. There's this is probably one of the best new term alerts, mm -hmm. but so this girl wrote this whole article about like having a dude that's a bitch essentially as your boyfriend, yep. but she's you can't it's not just that she goes, what does a female led relationship mean, which is FL FLR. Yep. And this is a new term that she's trying to say and she goes, and how does it work? So you know, Claire Audion was for crazy chicks. Karmic Mirror was just for annoying chicks. And female-led relationship is like if you want to just be like an abusive woman. You know what I mean? Yeah. So female-led relationship, uh, known as an FLR, as the name suggests, is a relationship where a woman is in the dominant position, enjoying authority over her partner, and the man is considered a submissive partner. It is much like a matriarchy, where the woman makes all the decisions regarding the relationship, exerts more authority over her male partner, and steers the relationship forward. But it's funny because it was just like, yeah, you have a thing where the girl runs shit, but like, <laughs> well, you don't really need like a whole 
Uh, you don't need a it, term it, for this. But that's what I mean. It kind of goes back to the thing where they can't just do it. They have to be like, not only they have to make it like it's okay yep. and it's accepted. Absolutely. It's yeah, like, hey, were you yelling at your like boyfriend and like whipping him? And you're like, and there's nothing wrong with that. This is just a genre <laughs> of relationship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. Enough, it's no, like a kink. It's like a new kink. It's always can never just be like, yeah, we kind of I wear the pants in yeah, the relationship. It's like, bitch. no, no, no. We are one of. The types of relationships, yeah. and yeah, there's, yeah, they always have to put. They gotta get a term on every of it. single. Thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they gotta get terms on the people that hate labels. Love labels. <laughs> so these are the types. Love that there, there's degrees. There's degrees, and it's funny to the other way around. It's just a degree of how much you fucking how whipped how, you are. <laughs> it's literally the degrees of how whipped you are. <laughs> it's legit. Like, it's like when we look at it, you go, yeah, these are just degrees of whippedness. One hundred percent is degrees of whippedness. Like. I make the decisions of when the guy can go and see his friend. It's like I give him an allowance. No, we're just oh sorry, we're just in an F F L R. Oh yeah, I just uh, dole out his own money that he makes to him. <laughs> He's on a bit of an allowance. Well, female led relationship also obviously works a little better when the guy don't work. Yeah, of course. I don't think they don't like is, that though. I don't think this is that. This is a imagine a girl that's a, like you know makes six like six figures good job she's dating some like guy that's never worked he just wants to stay at home all day and this is her trying to convince herself it's like no this is very <laughs> I'm very happy yeah. I have a female led relationship uh -huh. types of female led relationships so t the number one low level female control so this is you know okay. all of the decisions are taken mutually by the man and the woman so low level female control the guy still has a say in a decision or two you know what i mean but two, this is not equal this is not splits the girl's still wearing the pants but if they're gonna eat dinner he gets but like i'm say. saying like is this like a chick writing this and he goes even when it's 50 50 it's still low level female led like there's no like is there any uh non-female led relationships in this Yes, yes. Yeah, I like, think like 50 she, 50 is still female. No, but I think she's saying like level one oh. is they both, they take decisions, when they make decisions, they make the decisions together. Girl runs she's shit. She's got the veto power. But she has the veto she's power, the but veto. she asks him his opinion, kind of like the boss, you know, like when when uh, Twitter goes, what do you guys think of the new features, but they're just going to do what they're going to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. You know, we're all, this is a collaboration. Sure, sure. <laughs> Number two, moderate level female control. A female can enjoy being a leader for a while and has a sense of ruling the man. It helps boost her confidence and morale and makes the relationship more positive. So it's good for her confidence. Okay, that's good. What's level three? There's, yeah, we always want to make sure the girls. Yeah, yeah you got to keep her real confidence, boss bitch shit and all that. Boss bitch shit. Yeah. Number three, defined control. In this type of female-led relationship, the woman makes most of the decisions and takes on the male roles too. Yeah, sounds so this, like sounds like the veto power here is that there's a dude named Vito that she fucks on the side. <laughs> this one's starting to get into <laughs> very whipped territory. Oh, yeah, yeah. And number four, extreme control. <laughs> <laughs> this is balls in a vice. This is, uh, <laughs> they they actually have a ball cage. Yeah, that's this is the girl like girls. You know what? There's another part of it too where you know how there was like matriarch fest and all that sort of stuff. This is a girl reading that and kind of being like, we could have our own. Yeah, uh, we'll have um, control. We'll have the opposite of that. Sure, we can have extreme control of men. And then what is that? They what, what does a man do in this scenario? What's Servitude, the, the relationship. Uh, but like, is the guy not working? in this one uh i doubt the guy does work but the way that they i just love the way that they're selling it they go this relationship is for women who like to have the ultimate power in the relationship like does that sound like you <laughs> you might be someone that might be interested in extreme control <laughs> so we have low you know low level female control moderate female control defined control extreme <laughs> control brother but like is there the dude this man ain't leaving the room unless she tells him to why because she's wearing the pants and he's not wearing pants he's wearing a leotard 24 but like is she working two jobs and he just plays xbox all day and kind of keeps the house tidy i think he has to yeah, he, oh, yeah. she comes home he pretends to sweep oh so she many goes, chores she comes home she goes yo get that dick hard Okay, I think it's harder to sell the girls because they sort of know chores because girls can kind of be like you have no idea it took me eight hours to clean everything today and you're kind of like all right yeah. whereas the girls like if the guy goes it took me eight hours to clean she's like no it didn't I yeah, feel like she'll call him like, on that bullshit yeah, a little she more goes and she like just wipes her finger across the thing she goes <laughs> Really? She does. She wipes her she wipes her finger off and she looks at it. The guy probably dies. Please don't look. Don't look. <laughs> if she sees a speck of oh. dust, 
That guy's going to be licking it off, man. locked in the cage again. Extreme control. Several rules help define a female-led relationship. Some of them are mentioned here. The female makes most of the household decisions. The man shares his opinion before a decision is made. And the woman may value it. So it's kind of her decision. They're trying so hard to make this a thing. (laughs) May value it. Doesn't even... I might not. I might not put any value on it. The woman can help motivate the man. It kind of goes back to the thing we always say where it's like, you know, the girls that, um, like, they always say that men are douchebags, kind of, and then they just start acting like the men yeah, douchebags. Yeah, of course. I've been sort of saying that, that, like, it's funny that the all the, obviously all the girls that hate men the most look the most like men. Mm. You know, we're talking <laughs> buzz cuts, standing like That's men, true. armpit hair. It would be like if the leader of the KKK had a do-rag. <laughs> That's good. You know what I mean? You'd be like, right you know, like blacks are not good. And you go, why are you wearing a do rag? And yes. you're just like, they're I'm just not a fan. It's, just, uh, it's hard to get waves without them, you know? Cause you never really see the, gr- like, I think that, uh, the girl, they kind of like super feminine that like, they'd just be like, Oh, men are stupid. The, it's the ones that are like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. men are not good brother. <laughs> That's why I that, always right? wondered when women like transition to men, why don't they just do steroids to like, look like, like Hercules. They do. But like, they? I mean, no, I mean like, like bodybuilder. Like, why don't they go like really just jacked up? I'm not talking about like just to change your voice and get you some hair growing. I'm why talking, are they just talking about like, if you want to be the most masculine, like, why aren't you just like fucking huge lats and you can't put your arms down? I think a few of them do, but I think the problem is some of them, like, the, I mean, a lot of the ones that I've known in my life, like, work out they the don't actually want to act more masculine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Plus you do have to work out a lot. Yeah. Plus you have to work out a lot. I'm a them brother. <laughs> oh yeah, brother. Well, they wouldn't use gendered brother. No, I don't that'd know be, what the that'd, thing that'd would be. be but... Correct them, brother or sister. <laughs> <laughs> they be what's up, they be. But it is kind of funny because yeah, you'd be like, <laughs> I hate men. Now hand me my axe body spray. <laughs> it kind of is always always boils down a little bit like that, right? Yeah, because they just sort of. They do an impression of a man a little bit. I guess you are. Whoa. With the ones They are men. Well, I'm just saying, yeah. I'm not saying even trans people. I'm saying like, yeah, I'm saying like. The butch lesbians. Yeah. I'm not even saying lesbians. I mean, and although they tend to trend that way, mm. I'm saying like just your average woman that's like. the Okay, you could probably plot on a spectrum. The more a girl hates a man. And it will probably line up with the more she starts to look like, like a man, <laughs> act, look and act like a man. Traditionally, uh, right? The I don't know. There's there some there's some like asymmetrical bowl cut chicks who like are you know they do have they're still fairly feminine, but they'll have like you know the armpit hair and the leg hair, but they'll still wear like a dress, and they have they're the angriest. Okay, there's a few yeah. different molds, but even then, you just described three different things that that's are true. traditionally masculine, right? So they yeah. are dipping their toe in the water, that's for sure, right? Yeah, I'm picturing in my head like uh, the Jim Carrey bodybuilder on In Living You Color. would be picturing that, pervert. <laughs> Probably wasn't the first time today you fucking pictured it. <sighs> yeah, exactly. Um, so the woman can help motivate the man to work on getting rid of any bad habits like excessive smoking or dependence on alcohol. Uh, by being authoritative, so sure. Let's just start a re- this, Is that how Betty Ford started? <laughs> yeah. These are some of the things in extreme control, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you work on motivating your man to get rid of those bad habits, like excessive smoking or dependence on alcohol, by being authoritative. Oh yeah, <laughs> you got to raise that voice, knock that cigarette out of his hand, pal. Mm-hmm. If he comes home, he's smoking a cigarette. He's gonna be smoking this clip. <laughs> Gonna be smoking these fists. <laughs> he's gonna be smoking. <laughs> yeah, he's. You got two cigarettes, son. I got one over here and one <laughs> over here. Cause he's the one that's gonna be smoked, brother. This is Suzanne's household now. Extreme control. So that's extreme yeah. control. I'd like to talk to a guy who's in this scenario. I'd love to talk to a guy. I mean, it's a, like, there's only chick- one option. It's like a total just like Kip from fucking Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. Not Kip, uh, the other one. Well, yeah, yeah, is it Kip? I can't remember. No, Kip's the f- football throwing uncle, I think. Yeah, I can't remember. I know what you're talking about. You know who I'm really talking about. Skinny dude. Yeah, the, bro- the, brother. the brother. Or it's like a guy that's just like, if she pays 200 grand a year, and it's like, yeah, she's a pain in the ass, but she's at work fucking 10 hours yeah, a day. So you, I play the role. The boy is a little <laughs> play. I play the role a little bit, but. 
kind of just kept man. Oh, oh bro. <laughs> every day she just walks through the door. She doesn't even. <laughs> it's my picture. Knocks it off the hinges. I'm picturing extreme control. She kicks it down every day. <laughs> like before she gets home, like from work, you just take the fucking door off the hinges just to save yourself having to repair them. That's the day. kind of thing I'm picturing takes place in extreme control. The, um, so they, if you, they, you basically you can use your authoritativeness to get rid of the bad habits. Although the man and the woman distribute household tasks, so she's still getting involved with the household tasks, which is bizarre. The man agrees to do chores like cooking, cleaning. Okay, so she's saying that he. So yeah, it's just role reversal. Extreme control is just role yeah. reversal, but you're a dick. Sure. Yeah. It's so just, it it's, sounds like it's role it's literally reversal. Literally, just but you're the, a dick. the 1950s patriarchy flipped. It's essentially what extreme control yeah. sounds like. The guy does the cleaning. He's wearing an apron. He's got no pants on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she comes by, slaps his ass. He's just know, sitting at home. Flicks his dick. Drinking wine all day. Just getting <laughs> real buzzed. You never pay attention to me. <laughs> you got a bad habit of asking me that. Sure. Don't make a habit of it. <laughs> Boom, pow, poo. Yeah, he's just staring out the window all day with his just like rock glass, you know, just swirling. Exactly. Like the woman takes the most finan- she makes the most financial decisions and the man has trust in his wife to take care of these things. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Real revolutionary stuff that they're coming up with here. Yeah. The woman also takes decisions regarding social events and social gatherings. So don't even dare propose. You're that literally you're talking about the patriarchy. Except no, because but flip. in that scenario, like they, they've they've even taken away the things that the girl used to do. Like I'm talking about, but like the we're talking about like the 50s, like where it's like the girl the girl didn't do any of that shit. It's like the guys was still like you're telling me in the 50s if maker. the girl wasn't like the girl wasn't the one that's like and uh, don't forget we're going to the pool party. Yeah, maybe the remember, but it's like the guy would be like, well, this is what we're doing remind me next week if that's right like the you're saying back then the girl wasn't even like hey don't forget we're going to see your mother next week. oh maybe yeah yeah the emotional labor stuff yeah so she's saying like he don't even make those decisions anymore it's not a bad deal oh we're listening (laughs) you're kind of actually selling me on this a little bit in flr the book you imagine any girl you're dating trying to pitch this like, like just that's like, like in her, her i was thinking i think girls are putting this in their dating we bios. should try out this i'm an flr i'm an flr <laughs> level two minimum if you're not fucking keep swiping <laughs> yeah, if, you're, if you're not looking for extreme control <laughs> this is control like you've never seen before some women like female-led relationships because they get to control things. So that's one of the perks for yeah. the female. Is the level above things. extreme where it's just like the dude wears a diaper and then pretends to be a baby? Well, I think that's basically where you're at right now because that's the only guys you're getting show up, right? Uh, from finances to kitchen management. Um, also, uh, extreme con- <laughs> picture of the extreme control. Chuck, come in here for a second. Uh, turns out I don't know how to do taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, brother, come in here for a second. Hey, buddy. Uh, what is an audit? Because <laughs> the uh, IRS is coming in a couple days, so. Hey, uh, we got a little bit of a fire in the garage <laughs> trying to fix the car. Turns out I don't know how to change an alternator, so. <laughs> Thought I did. <laughs> Chuck, <laughs> uh, get on in here. I, uh, we might be bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know this rent get paid monthly? <laughs> yeah. So there you go. That's pretty good. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, turns out you got to pay these credit card companies. <laughs> I think she's like doing a lot of sack taps in that extreme extreme FSLR, FLR family. A lot of sack taps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she goes this. Ooh, ooh, Fred, I've made the decision. We're keeping our cash in a checking account and our, we're going to run a balance on the high interest credit card. <laughs> like the guy comes out, he goes, dinner is served. He's like, sack tap. He goes, <laughs> Spills everything. Ow. Nerd. Nerd alert. Ooh, brother. 
some women like female relationships. So, and th this is the best part. She goes, women also get the opportunity to mold a man into whoever he want him to be. Imagine creating your ideal man and ensuring that he meets your expectations. <laughs> That's a real I think you're describing you a son. <laughs> <laughs> is this for ch childless women? I'll tell you what, on top of this, though, uh, the type of guy that signed up for your extreme control, yeah. I don't think there's too many things you can mold him into. Because no. <laughs> the minute you mold him into anything else, uh, you're molding him into a guy who ain't doing this anymore. <laughs> yeah, He's like, you can literally mold him into one thing, a bitch. Yeah, yeah, you can't. There's no other form for him. <laughs> there's no other possible form for this guy other than just huge bitch. Yeah, what do you mean mold him into exactly? Like, you can mold him into, like... More Dude, of a like, bitch. Ooh, I like him to have dinner on the table by four. It's like, yeah, you can mold him into like what time he yeah, does his or chores. Like, or like no eye contact. <laughs> stuff like that. You, go, you don't make eye contact with me at home, brother. When I'm bringing my boss over to talk about <laughs> stuff, I told you to stay upstairs, brother. Okay. <laughs> That's not it, though. Extreme control. There is a lack of power struggle in such relationships. Yeah. Okay. Like, again, if it's like, yes, you just basically have the dorkiest man in the world. The yeah. man who is willing to have a female led relationship won't mind being dominated. He might even love his woman better, as she is well, the one. You better have to. Like, you, <laughs> you don't have a choice there, pal. It's the dumbest shit ever. A big, uh, I've had a lot of arguments on the uh, internet the last few days. Matt Walsh versus uh, TikTok on uh, whether you should have kids or not. Oh, yeah, that chick. Yeah, I kind of, it seemed like because that chick's like, yeah, that's what I do because I don't have any kids. But I will say, I didn't really notice. I saw the video. I haven't really entered the discourse of this too much, but I did see the video of her being like, and I do whatever I want and I make brunch and blah, blah, blah. But the, she did seem like she wanted kids. Mm -hmm. she just doesn't, she's like 29, just doesn't have them. <clears throat> And then Matt Walsh is like, you see, this is what happens when women don't want kids. And you're like, it seems like she did say that she did want them. She just doesn't have them. And There's a lot of those arguments going on right now of like what you should have, what you should do. Well, the one thing that like, obviously, you know, eventually all political positions, you know, eventually convert, not all, but most political positions, especially right and left, like eventually converge on what you need to do. Yeah, of course. Do you know what I mean? But like Absolutely. the... It is kind of interesting when you actually like take look at questions like that. I think there's the main part where it's like everything you do, you're giving up something else. So it's just like, yeah. I think it is kind of a funny thing where there's like the better way is this, the better way is this. it's like it kind of starts to it's like eventually, yes, uh, probably society is set for you to kind of have a family. No, it probably is better to be like younger and have no kids but like society is set up that it probably gets better I mean, as you go over uh, yeah and also just yeah there's many benefits to it and it's just kind exactly of human condition it's, it's the uh, human condition right but this is kind of the part where i think that the matt wall side doesn't get where it's He's conflating it with the Chelsea Handler stuff too, though, because Chelsea Handler it was that. like, "Oh, how sick is it to have kids?" You're like, "Well, you can't have kids." Yeah. So like, it's not even on the table for you anymore. Yeah. So you, it is a bit of a cope for Chelsea Handler because Chelsea Handler's like, "It's so sick that I don't have kids." You're like, "Well, you can't." Right. Anymore, you're too old. Whereas this girl is like 29. You're like, she can have kids. Like, yeah, exactly. This is not permanent. That's a good point. Yeah. No, it kind of is like, um, there. It's you know when people are like, oh. Uh, it's probably not good to be like an OnlyFans person that's mm -hmm. probably bad for you and then they go no one can do it and you go and they'll all be unhappy and you go no probably some of them are fine you know what I mean yeah. whatever it's kind of the same thing with this it was like it's they are talking on average but it's like yes there are like you're telling me Ricky Gervais is like like there's yeah. we know a lot of people that probably live like pretty alternative lifestyles for sure and it's almost sometimes your life their lives are like almost so sick that you're like almost like I've had times where you go your friends, their life probably sucks more. It's almost like you're embarrassed about it. You almost are a little like, you have to make up. You're like, yeah, no, I got problems. Absolutely. You know, you don't just want to be like braggy about yeah. like, because your your life situation sounds way better. For sure. For but sure. look, there's, there's people the, But then there's the other way around. Like, obviously there's times when they're, and you're always, it's, Chris Rock said it best. Single and lonely. Uh, and then the other part, yeah, what did he say? Know. He goes, he goes, uh, in a relationship and bored, or single and lonely. Yeah. Or whatever it is. I mean, you know what I mean? Sometimes your kids fucking turn out to be pieces of shit. That's the other part. Sometimes you're they gam kill, you're sometimes just taking they, a gamble. Sometimes they murder you. You're always taking a gamble. And then the other part is, this is kind of what I'm saying about both sides. When you see someone telling someone too much they got to do this, whether it's kids or whether it's not to have kids, it's the same thing I said about Austin a little bit where you go, 
when something when a party's so great, you're not texting through your phone to get people to come. Of course. Yeah, and I know yeah. that they're in the business of telling people how to live their lives, but there Absolutely. is a little bit of like, yeah, it's like there is no pro like. Look, there's no right. You have your one stupid no life. Right. There's no perfect way to do it. No. You, you most people eventually uh, play it wrong, and it sucks. Yeah, <laughs> for know, sure. The chances of nailing it aren't that high for most people. Yeah, like you know, with the relationships, people are like thinking like, "Oh my god, I met the one," and you're like, "Yeah, it's the one for now." Don't. But yeah, and it's like if you do it, if you play that game perfectly, find the right chick, have you know the right uh, amount of money. But it's like you know. A tons of people you have kids with the wrong chick that's a mess like it's just so many ways to of mess course, it up of course and actually, then it can be fine anyway. i actually was wondering fucking, well, last no night, perfect way to I, skin a cat i left the studio for girls though probably more so totally going no kids eventually they probably regret it more yeah i left the studio last night at like 2 a.m and it's pretty shady part of town we're in especially like late at night on a mm -hmm. weekday like like legitimately like oh definitely like, like, like i was like couldn't wait. I was telling Johnny I couldn't wait to just get on the avenue where it's like less busy or more busy. Sorry, but um, sometimes it does feel like someone's walking towards you too. And no, there was a guy and he yelled at me. He like I thought he was like a normal dude, and they yelled at me. He's like, "Can I ever go?" And like he yelled at me, and he didn't have any teeth, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Like I actually was like scared. And there was also uh, this crazy lady stabbed a woman in the face at the pizza place on the corner like a few days ago in the middle of the day. It's 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 wild out here. But I saw this like old these two old just like drug addicts who are just hanging out of the corner like across from MSG. And they must have been like, I was just like, man, it's so sad to like to see like you could just tell they're just like drug addicts, probably like in their seventies. And yeah. the part of me is like, did they win? The fact that they've just kind of almost made it to the they end. Beat the drug, game. Like, have they beat the game because they got to be drug addicts their whole lives and they're just like, <laughs> or is this like real? Like, I couldn't tell. Or he's new and then he definitely didn't win. I don't think you're new. You could tell these guys are life or drug addicts. Like. I'll tell you what, when you saw him sleeping in shit later that night, you might not be like. <laughs> A winner, winner. I, know. I had that thought momentarily, and then I was like, surely, obviously, they have not won. They're hanging out at 2 a.m. I mean, there's that David Cross thing, I think he said, like, long ago in one of his specials, but he was like, there is something romantic about just, like, what if I just fucking threw it all away and be a fucking heroin addict? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, and I, I don't think that's the thing is, I don't I have think that. they threw anything away. Don't you ever think, like, what if I fucking just, like, go, you know, fucking tour europe like by yourself for yeah. like six months and just fucking for sure party and just uh, fucking leave absolutely. it all fucking I mean, I was, walk on your lease and just go like you yeah, know what i mean of course i was talking to Shkreli yesterday martin Shkreli was on my show and uh he was saying like he's like you know he's like you know because obviously people are like oh jail's so bad or whatever and he's like yeah it's like you know sometimes sometimes even when you are out of jail you miss certain parts of it yeah you're just like the fucking just hanging out with the boys and doing nothing it's just like you're kind of like you not, have nothing to do you have nothing to do other than it's almost like, like being a kid again it, it is was it's like, like camp he's like especially where he was he's like he was in like this like minimum to medium security prison he's just like it, honestly he's just like hanging out with the dogs all day long that's the one part it's about like you're watching you never TV. get back about being a kid it's the only time sometimes you get it back is when you go on like an extended vacation like sometimes by like day four you are are completely able to like get the other shit out of your brain mm -hmm. and then you're just like there yeah not us though because we are you're always thinking about something yeah like all on the internet yeah, you're always thinking about shit so it's like, always you on never you. really like you'd have to go full ari where you like don't i'm you, not you like that anymore no though. me neither i'm not like trying to turn me back to the old man no scenario where i'm gonna go like as as cool as it seems just being a kid wind in your hair just a bike yeah no phones yeah not doing that you know what i mean no but the only time traveling, you, do you know that? when you get it back again, and that's what I was thinking. I think you get retirement, you get back to be a kid again. I guess. Well, I think so, especially some of those guys that moved in with the boys in the retirement home. I think it's kind of like going back to college. The, uh, le the most carefree time may, of your maybe. life. I think you have so many health issues at that point, though, that it's less. Maybe like if you retire, like maybe in your 60s. I yeah. mean, you do get sick of being carefree, what? and then you're just like, okay, you yeah, start exactly. collecting things to care about. But like on paper, like there's a romance to it that's Absolutely. fucking sick. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm not built like that. I almost like I do like the travel. Once you stuff, break out of being built like that, it's hard to go back. I could always I have I, if there weren't consequences, I, I could always do a long travel kind of thing for sure. You'd see what you just disappear. Yeah, I mean like, you think about it, you're just like, what if I fucking disappear? <laughs> I don't want Poof. Wanna, yeah. <laughs> Poof. <laughs> Poof. I'm gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then what happens if you do that all the time and then you're like, Yeah, I kinda saw everywhere. And then you like reach that end of the thing, you know, where you're like, fuck, I saw everywhere. Like, yeah, for no. the people who just like don't have, who have unlimited money, don't have anything to do. And then you're like, yeah, I just kind of like done everything. You need a new thing. I know I'd sign myself up for a new thing and immediately. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, uh, that's the problem. But once you're in the game, because you're already in the, you're in the fucking matrix, dude. You can't get it back out. No. 
It's very, well, I guess it's the opposite. You can't get back in the matrix where you just like, it's almost like, I, I think you, as you get older, it's almost like you exit the matrix. It's hard to go back in and just be carefree. That's yeah, a better analogy. Because you always, you know, you're just like, oh, there's nothing to worry about. But it's like, you know, that's not true. That's not true. Yeah. That's just your lying to yourself. Hey, you, you go, ah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that that all boils down to is like, when you kind of look at, you know, we have a lot of people that are like, oh, this is how you should do your life. And this is how you go. And you go, not only could you show like a few examples, you can show many millions of examples of all of them who played it that way, made no mistakes, and they are living in hell. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They didn't do through no fault of their own. And they're so, you well, know. And other yeah, other you, than like maybe choosing the wrong partner or picking the wrong place to live. But you still have to do it. Yep. So it's just like, the truth is, I think that this is kind of the boil, what my theory would be. It's like everyone's kind of saying like, this is the way to live your life. And they go, this is how you do it. And you go, listen, they're both bad. Yeah. <laughs> there is no one that's great. You try to do your best. To, and you don't even know until the end, right? Like it's easy to be 40. No, you can know that this sucks. Yeah, yeah, but you could say, oh, this is the way to do it. And then at 60, you're like, oh, I was really wrong there. Oh, you get I... a better one. Well, you just are like you think, you know, you're in the... I think if you just aren't living in a nightmare, you're yeah. doing okay. I yeah, think you're, for sure. I think you're beat. I think you're like, you know, if you just like can beat the S&P 5, if you just buy the S&P 500, mm -hmm. like if you are, if you don't, if you're like, uh, you know, 50 years old, you don't have like just kids that are like a total mess, totally. you know, like a real crazy ex that's just yeah. like never, if you, if you kind of end up in a situation where there's like some peace, yeah, yeah, I think sure. that yeah. that's, I think so. you did okay. Yeah, you did okay for sure. I agree with that. You don't have any real, real nightmares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't lose your fucking ability to walk, yeah. you know, or any yeah, of those like real catch and, ca catastrophes. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I think so. Cause have any, and you have uh, friends. Yes, like if you have yeah, any, yes, you know, a couple dudes that you actually can laugh with your, still. Your family talks to you kind of. So. I feel like you get all that stuff. It's kind of, you know how they you say like, hey, if you're a dude that husband. just works out, you can be in the top 20% of guys just by like not being overweight kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It's that if you like, if you can just not have like a nightmare yeah. and have a couple friends, you're probably doing better than half the people. For sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? And sometimes that's just unavoidable. Just, yeah, and then that happens. includes like not being like depressed, you know? Yeah. If you don't have like real mental health problems, no big messes, no like real, real like baggage, and yeah. you're not totally poor. Yep. I think that I you're, mean, you're doing okay. Yeah, there's people, I've been all over the world to places where there's people who are poorer than you could comprehend and they're pretty fucking happy. Mm. When I say poor, I mean like every day is like a fucking yeah, yeah, nightmare. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, like where you don't know. Like where, if you mean we don't know where food's coming from. Yeah, from, you mean but. poor, just like they. What do you mean? Like they don't have a bathroom? Poor? Yeah, like they live like basically outdoors, like in the you know mountains. Well, that just depends on what the Joneses are doing too, right? Yeah, yeah. Because if the Joneses are also like again, if you're like living like the mount jungles or like mountains in like Vietnam or some shit, and they're like, yeah, they're pretty heavy. I mean, if you go camping, everyone is. shitting outdoors. You're not like, <laughs> look at this savage. You're just like, that's what you do, right? That's what you do, yeah. All of a sudden, it's not that crazy. And then all of a sudden, if like everyone else at the campsite has a fucking porta potty and you're shitting in the woods, all of a sudden that starts to feel a little poor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a good. Uh well said. And this last person goes, my boyfriend moans his own name during sex. It's so <laughs> off-putting. He loves himself. <laughs> this guy, it's just a girl writing an article and she's like, you know, uh, venting about this guy that sounds like a maniac, right? Uh -huh. The anonymous lass who is in her early 20s begged for advice on Reddit for her boyfriend's annoying bedroom habit for moaning his own name to constantly looking in the mirror. You ever get a fucking good mirror? Do you ever get a good, uh, what's the movie called? Pump? Uh, no, Pump American Psycho. Oh. <laughs> you just get a little fucking flex in the mirror? Uh, yeah. You never? Uh, yeah. I mean, if there's a mirror. Did you ever uh, get a... You, you ever, ever get, remember like, the a girl who had a, a... Funny funny mirror? <laughs> <laughs> you remember the girl who had a mirror on the ceiling? Yeah. Yeah. That's... A two-way mirror. That's generally... <laughs> <laughs> they got a glass floor on the yeah. fucking upstairs neighbor. That she's <laughs> the upstairs fucking, neighbor didn't agree where she to does it. her therapy <laughs> sessions. That's funny. That is funny. Yeah, just look big at the red, mirror. Put a big mirror. red flag. A two way chick, mirror. Chick with a fucking ceiling mirror. <laughs> what? Yeah, exactly. How's the way? Isn't there a technique that you can see if it's a two way mirror? Maybe you can scratch it or something because like scratches. The, I can't the remember. There's some technique know. that they always do. I don't know. Um, but this one, it was just funny if there's a real guy, which she goes, despite her partner being relatively humble in everyday life, he yeah. turns into a different person in the sack. So he's just kind of like a, he, she, it's a bit of an F, FLR until he gets in that bedroom. And he's yeah. just, uh, also he, I don't know if you said, but he created a mold. 
He created a mold of his dick. He wanted and then the Jimi Hendrix. Says, and then she says, we use that. Yeah, so she's enabling this guy if she's letting him do stuff like and that. And then it says, I've also used it on him upon his request. Definitely got weird. It always goes so, back to these weirdos are always getting pegged. Yeah, you get <laughs> fucked in the ass by yourself? That's, these are, so there's a lot of flags here. Yeah, if you, the first flag is the mold. Second flag is demanding it. Yeah, mold, it. you go, all right, yeah, like the Jimi Hendrix thing, and you go like, right. If anyone was going to do it, it'd be you saying... <laughs> Put me inside of me. <laughs> yeah, so when he gazes deeply into my eyes mid sex, 90% of the time, it's because he's looking at his reflection. I'm not kidding. Then to make matters worse, he gets off on screaming his own name out in pleasure. So that's a psychopath. The disgruntled <laughs> girlfriend explains he wants me to moan his name. That's fine. But then he also moans his name. Just a couple of people yelling, <laughs> Danny, Danny. Oh, uh, Danny. 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 Danny, yo. Dan, oh, oh, <laughs> the oh, dirty oh, talker. Oh, oh. <laughs> and Danny, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> he compliments himself and prefers to have sex in the mirrors. This guy's a real freakazoid. Yeah, that's that's a mental patient right there. That's. Oh, it's funny that the girl. Like that's like if you ever if she's if she has any issues going forward, like like this is um she just like voided the warranty. On yeah. the relationship, like if you come back a year later, you go, I no, got all no, these no. problems. You go, nah, you, put, nah, yeah, nah. you put a mold the moment, of his own yeah, yeah. inside. The moment you do, you let him, you jammed his own cock inside of him. You go, you don't get to have any issues. No, anymore. that that is on you. You have made that decision, and there's no turning back. <clears throat> no sir. You know what I will say? That's uh, a little bit of a uh, the one thing that. I, when I was like in the village, like there's all these kind of like freaks, like, you know, they're yeah, probably yeah. into this shit or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. But there is an interesting thing that probably they're wrong about. Cause you see people on the internet always kind of being like new New York's a freak show in California where all the freaks are. And you're like, yeah, but that's kind of what it's supposed to be. Like, yeah, it, that's why they move here. Yeah. But not from here, you know what it is though? Isn't that interesting? Because people are always like, that's a freak. And you're just like, yeah, exactly. If you live in like, uh, Texas, that they should move to, the, like that's yeah, that's actually how it should work. Yeah, they're, it's not hospitable. I mean, if you think you're like the annoying part is when they go, no, that's not a freak. That's normal. They go, no, this is an abnormal like lifestyle. Yeah. They should move to the city where all the people do they all congregate. All the weirdos congregate, absolutely, including yeah. people who do stand up comedy. By For the sure. way, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, there's a uh, tons of things weird. But my point, like if that. you think about it, you know, we even like kind of Sneeko when he was on here a little bit, being like, you know, you kind of walk around New York and there's all these like trans people ever and you go wouldn't you think that's like good like obviously they wouldn't but i go you'd be if anything you go oh it's working how it should yeah. they all move to new well, york imagine you're the one trans California. person in your like town of four thousand people in like arkansas well that's the thing and you're because just like yeah this is hell or i can go find like-minded people who are like i don't have to explain right every fucking day what this is so if i was to argue the both sides on that the one side is you would say everyone wins <laughs> that's that's the argument for why yeah. but the the thing that's annoying is on the one side the annoying thing is they go no it's not weird it's actually super normal and you go no it is weird yeah it is it's, weird. but it's yeah. like and then the other side of that is where they go oh look at it, it's here and you go yeah that's what you want it's here yeah that's just well that's just you know big cities that's what you got yeah and you go that's yeah that's when you when you go to a big city that's where all the people from all like all the different um subcultures yeah exactly where they're trying to find like like you know people you got the jocks you got the artists you got the chicks with <laughs> skirts weird haircuts weirdo the haircuts. men in dresses check us out youtube.com slash or sorry check us out patreon.com slash the boys cast where we have a bonus episode every week you already know what it is. You, know you can also go to the. That's what I was gonna say. You can also go to theboyscast.com where we have a couple shirts up now, and if you can also listen to the episodes there if you prefer. But Patreon.com/slash/theboyscast, and it is very much appreciated. All the people that are supporting us because you know we just like bought you know fucking twenty thousand dollars worth of shit. So all this stuff we do. Uh, it actually is like a literal one to one. You know, you know, you uh, they saw Will Smith. And or no no, um, Oprah and The Rock were trying to raise money for Hawaii. Yeah, and you kind of look into the thing, and it's like one percent of one cent of, of every dollar. Of course, if like in terms of supporting things, it is like a legitimate a lot of bang one for your to buck. one. Yeah, a lot of bang for in the terms old of buck. us doing stuff and doing more episodes and all that sort of stuff. So, okay, this has been the Boys Cast. Peace.